While we're waiting for the boards to arrive, we can order the other parts that we'll need. Note that generating a bill of materials, or BOM, can be a slightly messy process. For example, when you're making the schematic, you will generally have an idea of what parts you will want. However, it can be helpful to wait until the end to generate a nice looking spreadsheet that lists out all the parts, reference designators, and prices. We're at the end of our journey. All we need to do is create our bill of materials and order parts from DigiKey. Once everything arrives, we'll build it. There are a few ways to create a bomb in KeyCAD. The easiest way is to open PCB New and go to File, Fabrication Outputs, Bomb File. This will automatically save a comma-separated value, or CSV file, for you. However, KeyCAD seems to be moving away from this singular bomb option to allow people to script their own bill of materials generators. To see how this works, cancel out of saving your CSV and close PCB New. From your project, open EE Schema. Click Tools, Generate Bill of Materials. You'll see a pop-up window that shows a list of scripts available to use. You may or may not see plugins listed depending on your KeyCAD installation. If you don't see the bomb to grouped CSV plugin listed, click Add Plugin. You might have to do a little digging to find the default scripts that come with KeyCAD, or you are welcome to download other people's scripts. To use the bomb to grouped CSV script that should come with most installations, go to the bin directory and navigate to Scripting Plugins. Click on bomb to grouped csvxsl and click Open. Click OK to keep the name. You can change some of the parameters, but by default the script will produce XML and CSV files in your project directory with information about all your parts. Click Generate. Close the Bill of Materials window and close out of EE Schema. The extensible markup language, or XML file format, is arguably more powerful, but I find it harder to use than the basic CSV file. What we're aiming to do here is import our parts list and then modify some of that data to make it easier to buy parts. If you're working on a larger project or many projects, you may be inclined to write your own script in order to automatically populate this data for you. But for now, we just need to know what to buy. Open your favorite spreadsheet editor. I'll use LibreOffice to show some love for open source software. Most spreadsheet editors allow you to import CSV files. In LibreOffice Calc, that's just File Open. Navigate to your project directory and select the 555 badge file. Note that the bomb script did not give it a .csv suffix, but it is a comma-separated value file nonetheless. Click on it and click Open. Make sure that the reference designators, values, footprints, and so on are in their own columns. Click OK. You should now have a list of all the parts on your board. Notice that the reference designators are grouped together for parts that have the same value. This will make ordering and assembling the board easier. This is a good start, but the spreadsheet usually requires a little cleaning up to make it usable. Take a look at the part rows. Sometimes, you'll make a board with special markings or mounting holes that show up as parts. Since these don't actually require parts, you can just delete those rows. Do note that we have a battery holder, which means we'll probably want to order a battery to go along with it. Create a new row under BAT1 and give it the reference Battery. Type 1 in the Quantity column. We'll want to remove extraneous columns and add a column for links to the part pages on DigiKey. That way, we can just click on the links to open a bunch of tabs and order our parts. We don't need the datasheet column since we'll be able to find the datasheet from the DigiKey part page, so delete it. If you're working on a larger project, you could fill out the DigiKey part number column to generate a list to give to DigiKey. However, we don't need to do that for smaller projects like this one as we can just manually click on the DigiKey links. So go ahead and delete the DigiKey part number column. It can be useful to see the manufacturer part number, or MPN, for some of these parts, so we'll need to manually fill it out for most. Leave the MPN column, but delete the rest of the columns after that, as we won't need them. Add a column header for price, another for total price, and one more for part page. Now, we'll need to do a little research. Take a look at the first part. It's our battery holder, and that has a manufacturer part number of BS-7. Open a browser page and head to digikey.com. Search for BS-7. 
Click on the exact match page and note the price of 79 cents. Copy the page link. Back in the spreadsheet, enter the price of 79 cents and paste in the link under part page. Under total price, enter the formula equals B2 times F2. This will multiply the unit price by the quantity we need to give us the total price for those parts. Go ahead and copy the formula down for the rest of the parts by dragging the fill handle. Now, the total price will be updated whenever we enter a price. You can paste the page link under part page, but I find it helpful to insert it as a hyperlink. That way, you can just click on them later from your spreadsheet to order the parts. The next thing we need is a battery. Scroll down on the battery holders page and you'll see DigiKey's recommended for use with products. It looks like this holder works with a CR2032 battery and the Panasonic basic battery seems to be a good cheap fit. Click on that link. Note the manufacturer part number and price. Copy the page's URL. In the spreadsheet, write CR2032 for the MPN, 29 cents for the price, and paste in the product page link. If you remember back when we were associating footprints with symbols, you might recall that we already chose a specific 10 microfarad capacitor, the ECA-1HM100. So type that in the search bar and click the search button. You should see three different ECA-1HM100 capacitors appear as results. Note that two of them require a minimum order quantity of 2,000 units. We don't want that, so click on the one that only requires a minimum quantity of 1. Once again, note the MPN and price. Copy the URL. In the spreadsheet, type ECA-1HM100 for the MPN and 18 cents for the price. Paste in the URL. Do the same thing for the 100 microfarad capacitor. Remember, we already decided on the 35ZLH100 for the 100 microfarad capacitor. When you search for that, you should see a few more results pop up. However, look at the capacitance and you should see that only one has the correct 100 microfarads we want. Click on that product page. The MPN is quite long, so you may want to copy and paste that into your spreadsheet first. Use the Format Painter if you need to fix the font. Back on the part page, note the price and copy the URL. Type 31 cents for the price in the spreadsheet and paste in the link. We didn't previously identify which LEDs or resistors to use, so let's find those. On DigiKey, search for LED. We don't want the super bright, power hungry LED lighting options, so click on LED Indication Discrete. You can pick whatever color you want, but I'll stick with red for my filter. We know we want through hole for mounting type. Check In Stock and click Apply Filters. This is where it gets a bit tricky. There's no real easy way to filter out our 3mm LEDs. Take a look at the supplier device package and you'll see that the 3mm ones are given by something like T1 or 3mm round. Back in the filters under supplier device package, hold control and select T1, T1 3mm, 3.0mm round, 3mm, and 3mm round. Those should get us a good selection. Press Apply Filters and sort by quantity available. Almost anything in this list should work for you. Just make sure you read the data sheet to verify it can handle up to about 10 milliamps. I ended up going with the MarkTech MT7403A because it seemed to have a good combination of brightness, viewing angle, low forward voltage, and price. From this product page, I'll copy in the MPN, URL, and price. In the schematic capture episode, I mentioned that we'd be using the 2N3904 transistor with a TO923 footprint. So in DigiKey, search for 2N3904. Select In Stock and click Apply Filters. Sort by descending quantity available and go to the first part that has a minimum quantity of 1. Copy the MPN, price, and URL to the spreadsheet for the Q1 part. We'll need to identify five different types of resistors. In DigiKey, search for resistor. Go to the through-hole resistors section. The most common type of through-hole resistor that you'll come across is the quarter watt 5% tolerance resistor. So select 5% for the tolerance filter and 0.25 watts for the power filter. Select in stock and click apply filters. 
Now we can narrow our search to the resistance and easily come back to this page. Up first is the 22K resistor. So find and select 22K ohms from resistance and click apply filters. Sort by quantity available and pick the first resistor whose minimum quantity is one. Make sure the price is reasonable. Something like 10 cents for a single basic resistor is normal. Go to the product page and copy over the MPN, price, and URL into your BOM. On DigiKey, hit the back button three times and you should be back at the results page after you selected your power and tolerance filters. Under resistance, select 330K ohms as that's the value we need for the next part. Click apply filters, sort by quantity available, and choose the first viable part you see. Once again, copy the MPN, price, and URL into your spreadsheet. Repeat this process for the 100K, 10K, and 100 ohm resistors. Because we got the footprint and symbol information for the switch from the DigiKey libraries, we know that DigiKey should have the EG1218 switch. Search for it and select the product whose minimum quantity is 1. Copy in the price and URL as the MPN is already filled out for us. Finally, we already identified the InterSIL 7555 timer for U1. In DigiKey, search for 7555 and click on the clock timing section. Filter with through hole and in stock selected. Sort by quantity available and you'll see our ICM7555. From that product page, copy in the MPN price and URL. Feel free to take a moment to make the spreadsheet look nice and easier to read. Save it as something like 555 underscore badge underscore bomb with the ODF or Excel file extension in your project directory. Now that your bill of materials is done, it's time to order parts. If you just pasted in links to the product pages, the next part is easy. All you need to do is just click on each of those links and order the quantity shown in your BOM. Don't forget to multiply by the number of boards you want to make. From your BOM, click or control click if you have LibreOffice on each of your part pages. You should now have a bunch of tabs open, each with a part you'll need. I recommend ordering enough parts to make all three of your boards plus one or two extra. So, for battery holders, change the quantity to 4 and add it to your cart. For the batteries, you can order them from DigiKey, but note that because they are lithium batteries, you won't be able to use air shipping. Most grocery and drug stores carry CR2032 batteries, so you can always try there if you don't want to use ground shipping. Keep adding the necessary parts to your cart. Remember that you'll need to order at least 6 LEDs as you'll need 2 for each board. For your resistors, it might actually be cheaper to order a pack of 10 instead of individually, so pay attention to the unit prices and bulk discounts. Once you're done, view your cart and double check that it matches with the parts on your BOM. Click checkout. You're welcome to continue buying as a guest, but I recommend making an account on DigiKey's page since it'll save much of your shipping information. From here, follow the prompts to fill out your shipping and billing information. I find that USPS First Class Mail works fine as a delivery option so long as you live in the United States and your package is under 14 ounces. Once again, you'll have to wait for things to arrive. I know this can be tough, but soon we'll be able to build our shiny new badge. On the next episode, I should have all of my parts in and I'll show you how to build the board. See you then, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more cool videos from DigiKey.